I recently got my technician's license and I was trying to figure out how to get FT8 working with my Yesu FT991A. Um, I tried for about a week and a half and it didn't work. And after um, I gave it a break after that, a few days, then I came back and looked at it again. And I found some settings that actually worked. Um, there's a site here, w6pql.com. This is for um, a, another ham. His name is Jim. He's got a bunch of information here on ham radio. Uh, but one of the things that he had on here was um, options for setting up the 991 for FT8. So I'm going to show you those options and how I got it to work here. Turn my other camera on. Okay, these are the options that are on the menu that he's suggesting you change. So I'm going to change those. Um, going to hit my menu button. Uh, scroll down to option 29, which I can't see because it's so small. Option 29. And he says set it for 38400. So you would have to hit select. And then you use the this button to rotate. The, there's a round multi button at the bottom. You rotate it, set it to 38.4, hit enter. Um, the next option is option 30. He set it to 10 milliseconds. And that's a default because it's in light blue. 31, he also changed that to 38,400. Um, let's go down to option 62. Option 62 is the data mode, um, which is set to, he set it to others. Um, the default is PSK. Let's go down to option 64 and 65. You change those to 1500s. And option 66 is off. 68 is set to off. And all of these in white are settings that have been changed. If it was a default setting, it would be in blue. And you go down to option 70 and you set it to rear. And 71 is D-A-K-Y. Did I pass it? Yeah. 71 is D-A-K-Y. Um, option 72 is USB. Now, in this case, USB refers to the USB interface that's on the back of the um, 991A. Um, when you see other references to USB, it's referencing upper sideband. So then you want to come out of the menu and you want to go to the M list key, which is this one. You hit that, you get some options here. And you want to set all those options across the top to off. The narrow Y to wide. He says the NB doesn't matter. And where is NB? I have to go back one for NB. Um, I set it to off. The AGC is set to auto. Um, the RF power, which is down at the bottom, is set to the max. Now, I found that if I want to talk down to South America, I can get by with uh, 15 watts. But if I want to go east, um, like to Spain and out in that area, um, I have to set it up to about 26. So I'm going to set it up for 26 since it's um, early in the morning. Um, the DT gain, it says you'll have to um, check those settings. 
Um, I left it at about 45 and that appears to work. I'm going to go back over to this next tab because when you scroll down here, now this is the most important one right here, the shift and the width. The shift is set to zero and he wants to set the width to 3000. But I found that if you switch bands and you're doing other things on the radio and then you come back to this setting, um, this width will change. So I usually leave this width on the screen so I can see what it is in, in case it's changed for some reason. Okay, so those are all the settings for the radio. Come back. Then the WSJT-X is the program that I'm using to send and receive. And you have to go into the settings under here. You put in your call sign and your grid. And then you go to the radio. For the radio settings, you want to set that to the correct COM port. And my case, this is a Linux box, so it's a USB 1. Um, you want to set the speed to what we set. Uh, the data bits to 8, the stop bits to 2, and the handshake to hardware. You want to put the PTT method on CAT. And the mode, here it is again where it says USB. It's not referencing the USB port. It's referencing upper sideband. But we don't want upper sideband. We want it for data slash packet. Um, for the split operation, it will work with rig. But there's some other settings you, you have to make. Um, it's easier to just set it to fake it. So when you go in and you hit test cat, it should come back green. I'm going to hit OK. Well, there's one more thing. Um, when you go under reporting, you want to hit this option to enable PSK reporter spotting. And I'm going to show you what that does in just a second here. And then under the colors option, I make sure I change the one that says my call. You right click it and you select the background color. And I set it, make sure I set it to red. Because if, if, my, if my call name pops up over here, I want it to be in red so I can see it. Oh, I got to get out of here. Future edit here. Future edit. I forgot the option for audio. When you when you plug in the USB cable to the Yaesu, um, it automatically comes up and sets itself as the default. And you have to go back into the settings for your sound card. And you have to set your settings back from this um, audio codec here back to whatever your original settings were. It will also change your in input device to this um, audio codec here. And you have to set it back to the whatever your default is. So you have to go into WSJTX under the audio. This will be set to, um, these both will be set to default. So if you plug it in and you start your WSJTX, it'll work fine because of the default setting. So what you have to do under the sound card is you have to go in and select the device that's listed as the, um, what is this? It says a Burr Brown. And you don't want the one that says monitor. You want the one that says it's a codec. So you hit that one there. And then for the output, you do the same thing. You scroll down and look for the one that says output Burr Brown. Now see there's there's, that one says C Media. That's a different device. So you want the one 
that says Burr Brown. So once you do that, that will have it working correctly. After you've got the sound card selected correctly, um, you'll notice right in this area, it should be a green um, little bar here. You have to adjust the RF gain button on your radio. If I turn it all the way down, you see the green bar goes away. That means it's not hearing anything and it won't send anything correctly. So you have to turn the button that says RF gain. And you notice it's red. Um, you want to keep going until it's gets green. And they recommend that you have it right around the 30 area. So you don't want it all the way up here. Um, it's not necessary. So you just adjust the RF gain button until you get right around 30 and it's green. So that means it's getting a good signal and it should be okay. Now just because you get a CQ and you hit it, doesn't mean you're going to get a response. Um, either they can't hear you or someone else double clicked it faster than you did. So they got the response first. In that case, it's the same thing. So this user CX3OE got a response from ZS1ERZ before he got a response from me. So my enabled TX went off and I went back to monitoring. So I'd have to wait again for him to come in. And those are the settings that I use to get my Yesu 991A to talk to FP8. Um, I tried it for about a week without those settings and um, I went to the PSK reporter.info site and I saw that I wasn't even sending out a signal. I wasn't being heard anywhere. So after I put those settings in and um, came back, um, the settings are being heard. You just have to remember that propagation affects the way the signal will be heard. You may have someone 10 miles north of you just running FT8 also, but you won't be able to hear their signal because of the way it propagates. So remember to go over to that site dxmaps.com to see what the propagation is like and you'll know where you should be hearing signals from. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.